As the times change, so does language. One word that has been used more recently is Latinx, also sometimes pronounced as Latinx. In fact, Merriam-Webster even added the word into the dictionary in 2018. So what does it mean? Calvin Molina Brantley, community resident, and Dr. Stephanie M. Hueso, postdoctoral fellow at Mount Holyoke College in Latin American and Latinx history, are with me in the studio to explain the meaning of this term and how and why it is being used. So Hispanic and Latino are terms that are used interchangeably. And even for myself, it took me a while to understand what they meant and what did I identify as. And now there's a new term coming into the mix, Latinx. Well, as we know, these terms are socially constructed, right? And as you mentioned, as the time um, moves forward, we, uh, as, as a society, we really um, place different um, values to, to these terms. And I think Latinx, um, as a term that has, been, has gained popularity, um, although some people could argue maybe not, um, but within these last couple of years, really is a term, a, a gender neutral term, right? Um, to be inclusive of, of um, gender diversity and gender non-conforming um, individuals. So I think that's why it's, it's, it, there's a push to use that word, that term now. Yeah, so I learned about the term uh, before it became mainstream, and I had an immediate reaction to it. I, I f again, to the whole idea of gender non-conforming, being a member of the LGBTQ community, that was an instant um, connection that I had. But it became much more than that for me. Uh, you know, I am part of a biracial marriage, right? I have embracing biracial children. I have several nieces and nephews who are biracial, and you know, I always say my fam my extended family really has. A sort of adopted the, 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 my culture. It's a really interesting point that you bring up with the biracial and the different cultures in the United States. Is Latinx a term that is used in Spanish-speaking countries or is it a term that is mainly being used in the United States? Yeah, from, from my understanding it is definitely a term that originated here in the U.S. and has gained prominence here. Um, there are some people who have um, who have seen the X being used in some Latin American countries, but the the problem with that is is that uh, at least the argument against it is that it is difficult to pronounce in Spanish, um, and there there are other arguments against it. Um, but what I've seen in Latin America, if there are communities who want to be gender inclusive, is the use of the E, so Latin, right? Um, and instead of las and los, mm. they would say les. Um, but the X because uh, because it can be pronounced in many different ways in Spanish, so like Oaxaca with the X is like an H, um, it's, it, it hasn't been used as, as much in Latin America. And it is, it is definitely a term um, that originated um, actually in online forum in, in the queer community. Um, and then after 2016 with the Orlando shooting at the, the Pulse nightclub mm -hmm. is when it really went into like the public sphere, right? Um, but it's definitely in terms of whether it's used in Latin America or here in the U.S., it's, it's gained prominence here in the U.S. And I also know that, Calvin, as you mentioned, you're part of the LGBTQ community. Are there other reasons why people would use this to identify themselves besides being part of that community? Yeah, you know, for me, it, the, the term itself has morphed a little bit. It has evolved with my own personal desires to connect with, you know, vocabulary that fully captures who I am as an individual, right? So the word Latinx really now has sort of evolved to include my family, right? Um, you know, one of the things that I experience on a daily basis is this adoption of the Puerto Rican culture within uh, my nuclear family, and I'm, I'm lucky enough to be married to... Um, uh, an African-American uh, male who who identifies strongly with that culture, raising uh, biracial children, and yet in our family we do incorporate uh, the culture 
in our food and the way that we celebrate any milestone that we have the holidays so for me when I sort of if you're thinking about my Thanksgiving dinner table I could take a step back and sort of look at the entire picture and I'm talking about 45 people at my dinner table that's how <laughs> you know I have a big family it, it's really for me is Latinx right that is, that is it Latinx our, our table is full of um, you know curry chicken uh, um, pernil and arrocongandule pastele all these other things that we know as staples for or these celebrations now being infused with cornbread and collard greens, and it just becomes a term that much it's, it's much more than uh, like a gender uh, inclusivity yeah. type of thing, but it's really more of a cultural yeah. blending, mm -hmm. right? As you think about the Puerto Rican culture, it's really, it's sort of expanded for me now. And I think for me, when I think about other other countries and how they speak about their cultures, America is unique in the way that people come here, right, with a variety of backgrounds. And for, again, for me, the term just naturally fuse it all together personally yeah I, I I would agree with that I mean I identify as a Latina right as a, as a cis woman but I use um, the X in um, as as a title for my position right I'm a Latin American um, and or historian of Latin American and Latinx history right and I use the term Latinx um, even though I don't necessarily consider myself part of um, the LGBTQIA plus um, community but what I'm doing with that is really trying to be in solidarity right not only with people who are gender diverse or gender um, non-conforming, right? But also because I think the X really represents um, all the erasures that that we've that we've done as a as a community, specifically in in Latin America, right? We're talking specifically about gender, but also a erasure of of black presence and black community, right? Um, the erasure, or maybe uh, maybe erasure is not the right word, but but the the perpetuation of sexism within our community, right? And so I, I see that I use that term to show both my colleagues, um, my students, but also in my own social circles, right? That I am, I am, I am in solidarity. Um, even though I personally identify as a Latina, I will use the X, or right? I will use the Latin X to talk about our community as a whole. I think just as the terms Hispanic and Latino face some controversy, Latinx is also facing a little bit of that controversy with some. What are some of those reasons for criticism of the term? This conversation happens a lot for me, mm -hmm. right? With my siblings, with people that I know, um, people who are really uh, set on making sure that we as a community are preserving and sort of in control of uh, how what terms we create to define ourselves, right? And I think one of the biggest criticisms I've heard about the use of Latinx is its origination and who actually came up with the term, um, whether or not it came from sort of this whitewashed um, sort of approach on describing these folks that sort of all look the same and yet they all claim to be different, right? And it's what you think about when it talks about culture, right? There's beauty in nuestra latinidad, there's so much differences and yet there's so much that unites us. We understand that being in it, people on the outside sort of just look and say, that's one group of people, right? So that I think for me, when I sort of have these debates going back and forth about its use, uh, it's, it's usually coming from that place. My position always is, you know, I redefine these terms for my own use, right? And I have taken on uh, the term because it means much more than uh, how it were originally did, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, so that's really what I experience when it, when it comes to the term. Yeah, um, I, I, would, I would agree with that. I think, you know, looking at it through a more um, historical perspective, right, um, or maybe actually more recent. So there was a, um, a poll that came out, a survey that came out just last year in November um, of a progressive like research market agency that asked that asked I think it was like 508 um, well they call them Hispanics right um, <laughs> uh, what term do they identify with and 98 percent said uh, or I should say two percent only said Latinx mm -hmm. um, and I think that they're trying to make a case. I think a lot of people are using that to say, like, oh, like it hasn't gained prominence, right? right. Um, it is tied within these academic or intellectual circles, right, and not in the day-to-day -day people or whatnot. But I think a question like that of how do you identify ignores the fact that 
when we're talking about a community, that can be different than how we personally identify, right? As I mentioned, I. I see myself as a Latina, but that doesn't mean that if I'm talking about my community that I will just say that they're Latino or Latina, right? Um, again, it's this idea of, of inclusivity. And again, as you're saying, right, it's not just about gender, but about many, um, many other, or, or fighting uh, other isms, right? Racism, heterosexual, sexism, and, and the like. I'm glad that you bring that up because yeah. that is a good case where people might say, look at nobody's identifying with it why are we even using this word mm -hmm. and then you have people like yourself and that maybe doesn't identify as latinx but still mm -hmm. is in solidarity with the community and you that does identify as latinx is this term here to stay do you think that we'll kind of look back one day and it'll be like a hispanic and latino and we don't even remember when we didn't use it do you think that would be possible i mean i do you know, I think for me, growing up, the word that was um, used to describe me was Hispanic. And it wasn't my mother calling me Hispanic. It was the textbooks and everything that you read in class. The, I mean, the, the vocabulary available to us for me to identify who I was was provided by the institutions that I engaged with, right? And one, so going back to what I was saying before, this idea of sort of taking control, uh, that's just, I think that that is, that is, the Perican way in a way, right? It's like this idea of like, no, I understand what you're trying to say. I'm going to take it, readjust it to what I want it to, to be. And and I think it, there's so much inclusivity that's allowed under the umbrella of Latinx that Hispanic or Hispa Hispaniola, you get into all those debates and Latina, Latina, Latino, like the the, the hyphen, whatever. Mm -hmm. Even the Latina arroba, right? Yeah. At one point. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's this this thing that there's always so much controversy to things. But I think as a community overall, I'm finding sort of more alliances with folks who are saying, uh, not literally, I'm going to use the term, but it's more of this is who we are, and I'm going to describe myself however I see fit, and either you accept it or not, that's indifference to how I'm using the word. Yeah. You know, as I mentioned earlier, these terms are socially constructed. Yeah. So I'm sure in you know a decade or two there will be another another word um, that will define this. But I think what's what's important to 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 think about and to know is that. Um, Using or adopting the term Latinx, while that's important and it shows this kind of solidarity, shouldn't just stop at replacing the Latina or Latino, right? Or Hispanic or whatever. It's not just a replacement. It's also an opportunity to reflect as to why we need this kind of term and then to to put in place um, certain actions, whether it's in you know your organization or your social circles, right? That you are also um, acting within this this ideology of inclusivity, right? And I think that that is what's important. Regardless of whether we change it or not, it's the fact that we have to act, right? That we have to also change not only in the term, but also in our own lives. Well, thank you both for sharing your opinions and your knowledge on this term. Thank you. There are many different reasons why somebody would choose to identify as Latinx, and the decision is a personal one. As words continue to evolve, it sometimes brings more social issues to light and can spark important discussions. Stay tuned for more on Presencia. Many voices, one community. ¿Quieres conocer más de los Latinos en Nueva Inglaterra? Te invito a visitar nuestra página de la web, wgby.org slash presencia. Haz un clic para que conozcas sobre nuestra herencia, tradiciones, cultura, diversidad y más. Queremos que tu voz sea escuchada. 